So this is going to be the first material in our section called gradient blend. And the idea of this material is that I'm going to show you how I made it and then you're going to have the actual finished product and you can recreate it yourself if you'd like to. Basically, I start with a material here. It's a cream colored material here. You can see the RGB values. We have an ND of three, force Fresnel is turned on, a roughness of 85, a pretty basic material. What I want to do is I want to create a multiple BSDF material. We haven't seen this yet, but this is going to get into this whole weight idea right here. What I want to do is I want to duplicate this BSDF and just utilize the settings that I already have here, or I could create a new BSDF. It just depends. But either way, what I want to do is I want to context click. So I'm just going to context click out here, and I'm going to either say add BSDF or I'm going to say duplicate, depending upon whichever you want to do. I guess I'll say add. So on this new BSDF, you'll see here that we have our default material pops up. And what I'm going to create here is something kind of on the grayish side of things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in the color on this guy using R2 and turn on force for now. Oh, I've got to turn, turn down the roughness, maybe something like 15, like so. Now, notice here that we have these little white dots. These little white dots allow us to turn on and turn off individual layers or BSDFs. And we'll come back to that in a little while. But for right now, I'm going to turn off that first BSDF, the cream that we had. And I'm going to look just at that new one I've just made. Okay, so this is that black, that sort of charcoal black color that we just created here. It's locked in. So even at a low roughness, we're getting our nice charcoal black color. If we didn't have that and we had Force Fresnel turned on, what we end up with instead is is this, which is not at all what we're looking for. So you want to use the R2 to lock in the color if you're looking for a very specific color. Now the question becomes, how do I take these two very different materials from one another and blend them together? Well, if I just leave them both set to 100, what's going to happen is it's going to take this at 50% and this at 50% and it's going to blend them together equally and we'll end up with something that's kind of grayish. So that's the blend. And I can control that weight of which layer gets blended more than the other by controlling the weight up here. And it's just a percentage value, 0 to 100%. However, I have a lot more control if I want to go ahead and use a map. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go to my cream color here and I'm going to load a map. And I'm going to go ahead and get the gradient right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop that in. And once I do that, it's going to invalidate whatever number I have here and wait. So let's go ahead and just quickly run that one real quick. And you'll see immediately the difference that it makes. Now it's basically saying, okay, you're blending these two, but this one is only being blended where there's white in this gradient. Now, we can even separate these even a little bit more by simply copying that map to the second BSDF, like so, and then hitting Invert. When we do that, we'll end up with much more separated two-material material that has a nice gradient between the two because of our gradient map. And that is more or less how we would create something that is made from very complex settings, multiple BSDFs, and we can just use weight maps to control the way that those things blend together. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save that out for you. And then we're going to go ahead and look at a couple others real quick. So I've got stripes blend, same thing, except here I have stripes. And I've got some anisotropy and whatnot. This would make a, a good starting point for some fabric. And then this one would be even more complex. This one I have some checkerboard pattern going on here for our mask, inverted. And I have, over here I have stripes for our anisotropy and our angle. So we're going to end up with some inverted stripes that are going to create this very interesting fabric checkerboard pattern that would be very difficult to create without using a multi BSDF material like this. So I highly recommend that you take a look at these, play with the settings, 
and get a feel for how to work with multiple BSDFs and weight maps.